G'day, I'm John Ford, editor of Caravan World, and we're at Port Arlington on the beautiful Bellarine Peninsula this year for the 2024 Caravan of the Year event. I'm in this van craft, it's 21 foot 6 long, and it's a really impressive couples touring van, fully off-road, heaps of uh, off-grid power, and an unusual layout. As you can see, we've got the club lounge down the back, and up front, a bedroom and a central bathroom in the middle. Let's have a closer look at it. The Vancraft has easily my favourite layout for a couple's van. Now that is the rear club lounge, centre ensuite and front bed with a partition between the main bedroom and the bathroom. If you're having anybody over to play a game of cards or have dinner with you in the lounge, you can have the divider closed and keep your bedroom private. It also means you get a properly split toilet and shower. There is plenty of room in that shower. It feels like the sort of size shower you would have at home, and I love it. The Nature's Head composting toilet will allow you up to 30 days of usage, much, much more than you'll get out of a traditional cassette style toilet. The bed itself was super comfortable and there was plenty of power points around the bed head and good storage. Network RV's Vancraft 216 is definitely a van that's designed with self-sufficiency in mind. It has a freshwater capacity of nearly 300 litres and a grey tank capacity of 95 litres. There's also a mains water connection when you're in town, but that can be used to bypass the tanks. Another little feature on this van is the bike rack on the rear. When the bike's on or off the van, the water tanks can be used to balance the van up properly, give a much more level ride. In terms of lithium batteries, there's a 300 amp hour capacity, there's a 1000 watts of solar and a 3000 watt inverter. So items like the air conditioner and the induction hob can be run off the batteries. Completing the picture is 12 volt compressor fridge with a capacity of 274 litres and there's a gas four burner hob and grill. If you are careful with your water use, you can last somewhere between eight and 10 days in the bush. Your actual limitation will be the food. So if you can duck in a town somewhere, then you really have no problems about living away from facilities. Certainly for living in the bush, off the grid, it's very well set up. Now the Vancraft, uh, it might be a fairly new brand, but it comes from a company that's been building caravans for a long, long while. It's built on a really strong truss chassis. It's extremely well built, very robust, and the suspension, a tough ride suspension rated to four and a half ton. It's got airbags from Airbag Man. The body's built from 30 millimeter sandwich panels. So that's the walls and the roof. It's on a 40 millimeter honeycomb floor. And all those panels are Sikaflex together and secured with extruded aluminium H molds, which give it an extreme rigidity and make sure that it's completely waterproof. It's also supporting the rigidity and strength of the van, the furniture interlocks into the walls. I like the fact that they use Raptor coating on the bottom of their side panels on the outside, but certainly the Raptor code, if you do get a few stone chips, it's easily repaired and it'll look good for the life of the van, essentially. All of these things add up to a van that's been really well thought out by people who know caravanning and have been in the game for a long while. The Vancraft is a big van with a four ton ATM and 8.75 metre footprint. A dual cab just isn't going to cut it. The van requires a beefy tow vehicle like an Isuzu truck or an American make like the Chevrolet Silverado heavy duty truck, which is what we used. On the road, I barely noticed the van was there, helped by the cushioning of the tough ride airbag suspension and the stability of the Dexter sway control. Of course, a big van coupled with a big truck gives you a big footprint on the road. And in this case, it's a hefty 15.1 meters. So the turning circle is wide and you need to be extra vigilant looking out for obstacles. And of course, make sure you have the correct towing mirrors. The most innovative single item on this caravan has to be the rear spare wheel and bike carrier. As it sat with us, the spare wheels were mounted on the front of the van and we had a dirt bike on the back. Now that's to help ball weight. If you didn't have the dirt bike on the back, you could put your spares there and it will comfortably take the weight of one or two e-bikes. Now it was around about $8,000, so it's a substantial cost as a single option. I would love to see it simplified a little bit maybe its load limit reduced from 300 kilos down to 100 kilos and have one designed specifically for 30 kilo e-bikes. On the 
network of a website, there is a warranty and service handbook. Servicing a van is very much part of maintaining your warranty. There's a five year structural warranty and a five year chassis warranty for any OEM components or parts. There's 12 months on both. I should point out that some items like suspension systems and batteries have longer warranties and, and they are not superseded by the 12 months listed in the network RV guide. Generally speaking, I'd have to say the customer care arrangements done by Network RV are quite good. I'm reminded of a comment in Vancraft's submission to our event where they say that $184,000 is pretty cheap for a van of its build quality. And they reckon that there's plenty of vans out there with less equipment that cost way more. And it's pretty hard to argue with that. I mean, you just gotta look at the electronics package. I mean, they're all things that, that cost a lot of money. And then down the back, you've got that option for the bike rack and that's an $8,000 inclusion. So, you know, all of these things add up, of course. It's a big van, plenty of room for a couple inside. Lots of opulence equals lots of cost. So we're starting to see, even though $184,000 is a fair whack, there's a lot in that van that, that go into that price point. The slide out gas bottles are incorporated in the toolbox and there's a massive open compartment on top for firewood or leads and hoses. There are indoor and outdoor kitchens, an outdoor shower, electric awning, Dometic air conditioner, composting toilet, instant gas hot water and a diesel heater. What really sets this van apart from others we've seen is the bold colour scheme, which can be polarising, and the rear window framed club lounge, which provides a living space superior in size to many vans of its size on the market. In terms of X Factor, that bike rack aside, for me, it's the overall look of this van. The matching of the graphics to the bike is a really neat look plus the balance of white and black using Raptor coating instead of checker plate. This fan is subtle, but aggressive. And it's aggressive because it sits on what is also a big X factor, that tall 12 inch truss chassis. This thing rolling around a caravan park, it looks dominant without being overbearing. And I really like that. 